Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is November the 13th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our study in the book of Hebrews, and today we find ourselves chapter 1, and we're going to begin in verse 4. Now, we have just been told that Jesus is the brightness of the glory of the Almighty. He is the express image of his person. And verse 4 continues that thought by saying, he has been made so much better than the angels. Now, when it says he's been made, we must understand that Jesus was never created. He, he is eternal. He was always existing with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, but not in flesh form. He was made flesh, the perfect human. What God originally intended for Adam Jesus was. Jesus became. That's why we're told in verse 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. And so Jesus, back to verse 4, has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than the angels because he lived a life of perfect obedience without flaw, without fail. Now, when God is speaking of the angels here, you have to remember throughout the Old Testament many times, and even in the New Testament, specifically in the book of Romans, many times God refers to Israel as a nation, as a whole, not the individual Israelites. So when Romans tells us that all Israel will be saved, it doesn't mean that every individual Israelite will be saved, but that the nation as a whole will be saved. And so when the Bible is speaking of angels here, it's not necessarily speaking of every individual angel because some of those angels fell. They rebelled against God. But the angelic creation as a whole was created to serve God, to honor God, to worship God. And yet the angelic creation failed God in its rebellion, but Jesus never failed. He was the perfect creation of what God originally intended for man. That's why he's called the second Adam. So we must be mindful here that when the Bible says being made so much better than the angels, in verse 6 it tells us when the Almighty bringeth in the first begotten into the world. When Jesus, Almighty God, entered into flesh. In verse 5, it says, For unto which of the angels said the Almighty at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, when did he say unto the angels, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. The son always has been, always is, and always will be. But the angels are created beings. And so they serve God as a ruler, not as a father. And that's why Jesus being God, verse 6 says, When he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. Now God is the only one to be worshipped. He's told us in the first commandment, Thou art to have no other gods before me. And so Jesus being worshipped by the angels indicates that he truly is God. And this is the dividing point for many people and for many other religions. Most would say that Jesus existed. Most would say that he was a prophet. But only those who have been truly born again worship him as Lord and God. And that's why verse 7 and 8 says, Unto the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. In other words, they have been made servants. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, that is the word in the Greek, theos. It means divinity. It's the one and only true God. He says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So it's indicated to us here that he is God. He has a kingdom. If he has a kingdom, therefore, he is king. 
king of all kings, Lord of all lords. He says of his beloved son in verse 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Now let's spend a moment on that because we're supposed to be and live in the image of Jesus. And so if Jesus has loved righteousness and hated iniquity, so too should we, friends. And we should be very specific about what falls into the category of righteousness and what falls into the category of iniquity. Because there are many things that many of us allow into our lives on a daily basis that fall into the category of iniquity. The things we watch, the things that we listen to, the things that we read, the things that we discuss and talk about, things that we wear, things that we pursue, the way we spend our time, the way we spend our money. We must be very disciplined about what we give ourselves to and how we use our resources. And that's what Jesus did through his entire lifetime. He loved righteousness, the things that bring pleasure to God, and he hated iniquity. And because of this, God feels the divine one, even thy God feels the divine one, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, above all human beings, because Jesus is the perfect human being that God originally intended man to be. Because as we have discussed, it is Jesus who has in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of his hands. Now the heavens will perish, but Jesus will remain, hallelujah. He will always reign, but the heavens and the earth, they shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. They shall be changed, a new heaven and a new earth. But thou art the same, O Lord, unchanging, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thy years shall not fail. And so Jesus is recognized as king. That's why verse 13 says, To which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, a place of authority, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are not the angels ministering spirits? sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. Now, what this verse hints at is that there have been angels that have been appointed to each of us that are here to aid us in our journey. Jewish folklore goes as far to say that not only does every human have an angel assigned to it, not only every animal, but every blade of grass has an angel assigned to tend to it. Now that could be a bit of a stretch, but what that shows us is God's great care for his creation. And who's to say that it's not true? Well, let's end today by looking at the next verse, which is in chapter two, where we'll pick up tomorrow. Having known all of this that we've discussed over the last four days, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard lest at any time we should let them slip. In other words, these things should motivate us. They should encourage us to live a more disciplined life, to become a better follower of the Lord Jesus. And that is my prayer for you, friend, that as you sit in with us on these studies day after day, that you are becoming a better follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, beginning in your heart and working outward so that everything you say, everything that you do, everything that you think brings him, the Lord Jesus, honor, glory, and praise. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so thankful that you're again with us this morning. I pray that your journey with Jesus will be blessed today. And I pray that you'll sit beside still waters with him today in fellowship, that you will be still in reflection and that you will know that he is God. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I do love you, and I'll see you on the next video.